Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at the upgrades I'm making to the UI for my RPG Hero Diner game. So previously, each character, they would approach the counter, they would instantiate their own unique speech bubble with its own hard-coded message, and then it would be deleted after a few seconds after you've read it. That doesn't scale well, because every time you add another character, you now have to create a unique speech bubble object. So I knew that was more placeholder than final. And so what I decided I was going to do is I'd have just one speech bubble, and that the people would talk into it. And that I moved most of the control off of the characters and onto the speech bubble, which means I created a new script. So we'll take a look at how to do that. I did just want to mention that part of what I'm doing as far as like the animation, it's because I just purchased text animator by Fubuchi Creations. Fubuchi Creations. I normally wouldn't have purchased this because it was like $30 and I figured with enough effort I probably could get Text Mesh Pro to do it on its own. But right now Unity is having a flash sale so I got it for like $9 USD. So at that price I figured I would get it and would just make certain things easier. So anyway some of the animations you'll see is because of that. Okay so how is this working now? So let's quickly run it and then we'll walk through it. So the character approaches. Now that looks like the window is being instantiated, but it's not. What's going on is the window itself, the background, the image is being disabled, and then the text is being sent, uh, set to blank. So it looks like as if it's instantiating and then uh, being destroyed. It is not. So I'm going to have to work on the timing a little bit because it looks like it is clearing up. It's deleting a little bit too quickly. And see that animation? That's because of text animator. So already it looks different. I'm still not that happy with the background. I switched to backgrounds, but since the um, environment has a more realistic look to it, I don't like the cartoonish appearance of the uh, the background frame for the text. So I still want to find a better one than that, but that's what I've got at the moment. Okay, so what do we do? So first I created the canvas and I've made it no secret that I really kind of loathe the way Unity handles the UI. Uh, and it's been like this for years, but it's what we got. Anyway, so uh, when you create a UI object, it will create a canvas. And then what I did is I created this, the chat window, which is just an image. Okay, so you can see it is just a UI image and it's disabled by default. And then as a child to that is a text mesh pro object. Again, that's just game object. UI Text Mesh Pro. If you haven't installed it yet, it will prompt you to do a couple installations. So even though it's here in the menu, it will still prompt you to do some installations. Again, I don't understand why they do that, either it's installed or not. It's just weird that it's in the menu and yet you still have to do an installation. Okay, so I added a uh, image object. I made a child Text Mesh Pro object to that image object, and by default, the image object is disabled and the text mesh pro object has no text so effectively it's as if it's not there even though it is it's just not being drawn there's nothing to drawn because one is blank and the other one's been disabled so there is a script attached right here so chat con this is the new script so let's go ahead and open that up and what this does does a couple of things. So to do this, you need to add a few more namespaces. You need to add TM Pro for Text Mesh Pro, and then UI uh, Unity Engine UI, and that's for this. So public image speech BG. So that's the speech background object. So in other words, when you do that, when you create that, you are then able to take this. and then drag it here. You make it public so it's accessible in the inspector, and then you just drag this over here. Next, in the start section, we want to have the Text Mesh Pro be set to blank. And this is something that I've mentioned before. If you're not using a UI version of Text Mesh Pro, if you just go here to 3D Object and you choose Text Mesh Pro, 
that is slightly different. So if you wanted to change the case there, it would just be text mesh pro. But when it's a UI, you have to choose text mesh pro UGUI. And we're setting it to blank. Again, the script is attached to the actual text mesh pro object. And so it's saying set that to blank. In the update section, we now check for change text, yes. And you can see, because it says customer con, that means this is a static variable, and that is where it's defined. So we'll just quickly jump over to customer con, and you'll see right here, public static string, change text, no. So by default, that other script will not change text. So what would make it change text? And that happens. So right now, so we have a stop approach. This is basically the timer that determines when the customer is going to stop walking. And when they stop walking, a few things happen. And one of those things that happens is we now take that variable and we set it to yes because they've, uh, they've arrived at the counter, and so now we want the text to appear. So change text goes to yes. Okay, back to chat con. So if this is set to yes, enable chat. So enable chat is a custom function. I don't use these a lot. I believe, I think the last time I actually used one of these was in the um, Voxel framework project because I believe I was using, uh, I was using custom functions for the different shapes, if I recall correctly. This is great because it saves you a lot of redundant typing because we're saying that if this is true, we want this to happen. But then based on something else, we want something else to happen too. So since this is identical, as long as this is true, we always want this to happen. So let's take a quick look to see what enable chat does. Enable chat. So uh, we set this back to no. So in other words, we only want change te uh, text to be true long enough for us to start this process, then we immediately want to set it back to no, or else the process will just keep uh, instantiating, well, not instantiating, it'll keep starting over and over again. We don't. We've triggered it, now we want to set it back to no. So we change text back to no. Speech bg enabled equals true. So remember how we said this over here was not enabled? Now it is enabled. So you'll, the background will appear and then start coroutine, disable chat window. And then that basically reverses some of this. So wait six seconds. Remember I said we're, it was disappearing a little bit too long. You could change it to seven. You could change it to eight, whatever you want. Speech background enabled equals false. So we made that invisible. And then get component text mesh pro UGUI text is set back to blank. So basically we're reversing this stuff. We're, we're, we're going back to the state of this not being visible and this being blank. Okay, so if this is set to yes, we run that custom function, but then we use a switch, which is a conditional statement, which basically it looks at the different potential values of this variable, and then depending on the value, it will execute uh, whatever it is that you have for that case. I didn't make a good explanation of that, but this is an alternative to if. So you could have if game flow dot spawn hero num equals one, if equals two, if equals three, and you can do all these individual if statements. But here's the thing. If those if statements aren't all connected by an else, then every single if statement will run. So if you're checking 20 different possible values with 20 different if statements, if they're not connected with an else, they will all run even though uh, you've hit the true one. Here, with a switch statement, once you get to the value that it matches, break, it will stop executing. So with if statements, they'll be executed from top to bottom, this will stop. So you could have 5,000 choices. But as soon as it hits the one that is true, it stops. It breaks out of that. So it's meant to be more, um, more efficient, less resource intensive. But again, the games I, I make, it's really not an issue. But I did want to call that out.
Okay, so switch game flow dot spawned hero number. So spawned hero number is something I added just for this particular purpose. So if we go into game flow, here we go. So public static again, it's static, so it's accessible to the other uh, to the other uh, scripts. Excuse me. Public static int spawned hero number, and all this is is it's taking a value that was known within this script and make it accessible to the other scripts. So all spawn hero number is, if you remember, when we have our spawn routine, we do this. We say which hero, and we have a calculation. We, we, I'm not going to go through the explanation again. You can watch that video. But we have this calculation. This is ultimately an integer. So all I'm doing is taking that calculation and dropping it here into spawned hero number. So in other words, this, which was being stored uh, in just this script, it's now accessible in all scripts because we're taking that value and we're dropping it into a static variable. So now it's accessible anywhere. OK, back to chat. So if that value, so the object that's being spawned, if it's that number, then we want the text to be that. If it's a different number, it's different. So in short, this is creating the connection between the specific hero and the message they give. So this is what really eliminates the need for every object to have its own spawn object. Instead, we're just modifying the text. And this is really what I probably should have done from the beginning. But a lot of times, uh, a Band-Aid is easy to work with at the beginning. But eventually, you have to kind of tear off that Band-Aid and, and, and fix things the way that they should be. So since we're very close to being done, at least with the uh, early access and getting ready for uh, getting it ready for early access, this is we really need to have the permanent solution. So rather than spawning, deleting, spawning, deleting, that's very inefficient. You don't want to do that if, if you don't have to spawn something and then delete it. Again, I don't think there'd be a memory leak issue because there's not that many spawns and not that many deletes. But it's the principle that you should tighten things up as you as you reach reach a commercial uh, release. As you can see, it's just two sentences, so I need to add in the other text. I've been working on this all day. As I mentioned, I only just bought Text Animator yesterday when it was on flash sale, and then I um, I started to integrate it today. So that's a little risky to do, to, to be that far into a project and integrate a new module. Um, but so far, so good. It, it did take me a couple hours uh, to get to where I am, but I, I think it's I think it works well now. It's pretty solid. All right, so I think that's about all that I wanted to discuss. If you want to see a separate video where I do a deep dive into Text Animator, I could do that. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not a pro yet. Like I said, I only just purchased it, so I'm only using the bare minimum to just give a little bit of visual uh, flair to you know them talking rather than just having the, the paragraph appear. That's very old school, so uh, at least it can type out now. Anyways, that should about do it. So that's where we are with our RPG Hero Diner. I have just about enough models to go into early access. Like I said, the main thing is I wanted there to be enough variety and then I'll put it on early access in itch.io and depending on how well it does, we'll determine how many more assets I can buy. And then at that point, um, like I said, there'll be two versions. There'll be the initial uh, early access version, which is basically what you've seen here plus a few more characters. And then there'll be the final version where we'll add whole new functionality dealing with how you attain your ingredients for the meals, that there will be NPCs, and either you have to choose between NPCs or there'll be one NPC, and depending on how much uh, gold, money, whatever you have, you can commission them to go to different areas and they can get different ingredients for you. And then we'll see how much of that needs to be uh, built out and how much complexity we want there. Okay, so I think that's just about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And uh, that should about do it. So I hope you found this interesting and please do enjoy the rest of your day.